Welcome to this video tutorial on caring for a patient with a pacemaker. An artificial pacemaker is a small device that uses electrical impulses to help control heart dysrhythmias. A block in the heart's electrical conduction system or a malfunction of the heart's natural pacemaker, the SA node, can cause a heart dysrhythmia. The primary purpose of the pacemaker is to sustain an adequate heart rate that will maintain sufficient blood pressure and perfuse all organs adequately. In some patients, artificial pacemakers are used externally to address a temporary need, and in other patients with more permanent conditions, pacemakers are implanted surgically. Whether temporary or permanent, a pacemaker provides an electrical stimulus traveling through lead wires to stimulate the myocardium, the heart muscle, to depolarize and contract. The parts of a pacemaker include the battery or brains, known as the pulse generator, and lead wires that have electrodes on the ends. The pulse generator houses the pacemaker's energy source and controls. The nurse should verify that the rate prescribed matches the rate set on the pulse generator. The mode of pacing can be set on demand or asynchronous. Demand pacing senses the heart's impulses and paces only when the patient needs it. Asynchronous pacing mode sets the pacemaker to fire at a fixed rate regardless of the heart's ability to generate impulses. Temporary pacing is necessary for the short-term management of dysrhythmias until the patient's rhythm can be stabilized or a permanent pacemaker can be inserted. Normally, all types of temporary pacing are by demand, in which the pacemaker delivers electrical current only when the heart's rate falls below the preset rate. They are typically used for less than three days. Temporary pacemakers include transcutaneous, transvenous, epicardial, and transesophageal. Transcutaneous external pacing is primarily for unstable rhythms in emergency situations, requiring two electrodes on the chest, either in the anterior lateral position or the anterior posterior position. With a transvenous pacemaker, the pacer wire is inserted through a large vein into the right ventricle with the leads attached to an external pulse generator box. Epicardial pacing is most commonly used with cardiac surgery patients undergoing an open thoracotomy. Temporary lead wires are sutured loosely to the outermost layer of the heart exposed through the skin and connected to an external pulse generator similar to transvenous pacing. Transesophageal pacing involves placing an electrode in the esophagus through the nose or by a pill electrode that is swallowed. The electrode connects to an external pulse generator by a wire. This type of pacing is commonly used only for atrial pacing in sinus bradycardia, supraventricular tachycardia, or for diagnostic studies. When caring for a patient with a temporary pacemaker, there are several guidelines to follow for safe practice. Assess the patient's tolerance of the heart rhythm. This is done by continuous ECG monitoring and assessing the patient's mental status, blood pressure, pulse, heart sounds, lung sounds, skin color, warmth, and urinary output. Check the system for proper functioning. Secure all connections. Secure the generator box to the patient. Check the pacing threshold every 12 hours, replace the battery generator or connecting cable for failure to pace, and adjust sensitivity for undersensing or oversensing and notify the physician. Maintain electrical safety. Verify that wires are connected and secured to the correct connector ports. Keep the insulation cover over the uninsulated ends. Wear rubber gloves when handling the exposed terminals. Do not touch the patient and electrical equipment at the same time. Keep ungrounded electrical equipment from contact with the patient and prevent liquids from coming in contact with the generator, cables, or insertion site. Monitor for complications at insertion site. Assess the site daily for infection. Change the dressing every 48 hours using central line dressing sterile technique. Assess patient safety and comfort. Explain the purpose of the pacemaker to decrease anxiety Position patient comfortably to avoid tension on the external wires and generator. Provide pain medication or sedation as needed and provide diversional activities when mobility is limited. Permanent pacemakers are used to treat various bradycardic arrhythmias and are implanted during a brief surgical procedure, usually under local anesthesia. 
The electronic control center of the pacemaker is called the pulse generator, which is encased in titanium with a lithium iodide battery inside that lasts 5 to 12 years. The pulse generator is attached to one or more lead wires that are threaded through large blood vessels in the upper chest into the heart. Small electrodes at the ends of the leads attach to the inner surface of the heart and pick up the heart's natural electrical signals and deliver the pacing pulse from the generator. The pulse generator is usually placed under the skin below the collarbone. Most implanted pacemakers are dual chambered pacemakers in which an electrode is placed in the right atrium and one in the right ventricle. If necessary, a third lead can be placed in the left ventricle with a biventricular device. When caring for a patient with a permanent pacemaker, teach the patient before surgery about the reasons for the pacemaker, potential complications, pre-tests including a baseline 12-lead EKG and bleeding function blood work, the need for IV access for fluids, sedation, and emergency medications, and that they are to have nothing by mouth for eight hours before the procedure. The nurse will then assess baseline vital signs, peripheral pulses, and heart and lung sounds. Assess the patient's anxiety level, actively listen, reassure, educate, and give sedation as needed. Shave and scrub the access site where the generator will be implanted. Maintain a sterile field, and keep a cardiac monitor on at all times during the procedure. Following the procedure, monitor for complications of insertion such as pneumothorax or a collapsed lung, hemothorax, collection of blood in the pleural cavity, perforation from the pacemaker lead, and cardiac tamponade, which is pressure on the heart caused by fluid buildup around the heart. These complications are seen as shortness of breath, low blood pressure, chest pain, or a rapid heart rate. Monitor for lead dislodgement, seen as ECG changes or hiccups if the diaphragm is being paced. Monitor the ECG for loss of sensing, loss of capture, or failure to pace. Provide pain medications and interventions as needed, and assess the insertion site for bleeding and infection. Apply an ice pack to minimize pain and swelling for the first six hours. Maintain bed rest for 12 hours. Restrict movement of the affected arm for 12 to 24 hours. After 24 hours, assist with gentle range of motion exercises three times daily to restore normal movement and prevent stiffness. Do not give aspirin or heparin for 48 hours. If defibrillation is necessary, avoid the area surrounding the generator site. Discharge instructions to teach the patient. Placement of the pacemaker generator and leads how it works, and the rate at which it is set. Monitor the site for bleeding and infection for the first week, as bruising may be present. Avoid immersing the site in water for three days. Minimize arm and shoulder activity of affected arm and wear loose covering over the incision for one to two weeks to prevent dislodgement of new leads. Avoid contact sports and heavy lifting for two months after surgery. Contact the physician with fatigue, palpitations, or recurrence of symptoms. This may indicate pacemaker malfunction or battery depletion. Take the radial pulse daily before arising and notify the physician for rates outside those programmed. This may indicate pacemaker malfunction or battery depletion. Carry pacemaker information at all times and wear a medic alert bracelet. The pacemaker will trigger some airport security alarms. Discuss any possible procedures with the cardiologist. Some procedures, such as MRI or electrocautery, may affect the pacemaker. Household appliances, such as microwave ovens, radios, and gardening tools will not affect the pacemaker. Cell phones currently don't appear to affect pacemakers. Modern pacemakers have built-in features that protect them from most types of interference from other electrical devices. However, the patient needs to be aware of their surroundings and other devices that may interfere. Devices with possible risk include anti-theft systems, strong metal detectors, MP3 player headphones, they should be kept at least three centimeters away from the pacemaker, shockwave lithotripsy, which is a non-invasive treatment for kidney stones, power generating equipment, arc welding equipment, powerful magnets, therapeutic radiation as for cancer treatment, 
and TENS units for pain relief. Avoid high voltage or radar machinery or working over large running motors. If interference with the pacemaker is suspected, move away from the electrical device or turn off the equipment. Signs of pacemaker malfunction include dizziness, fainting, fatigue, weakness, chest pain, or palpitations. Maintain follow-up care with the physician as recommended. Between office visits, the doctor can keep track of the pacemaker's operation through trans-telephonic monitoring. Pacemaker malfunctions should be reported to the physician and include loss of sensing, failure to capture, and failure to pace. In loss of sensing, the pacemaker is either oversensing and senses an external signal as an impulse and does not pace, or it is undersensing the heart's own impulse and it paces the heart unnecessarily. As you can see in the example of undersensing, the first two beats are paced, then several intrinsic beats occur, but the pacemaker fails to sense these beats, resulting in competition between paced beats and the heart's intrinsic rhythm. The nurse should check for electromagnetic interference and proper grounding of the equipment. In undersensing, increase the sensitivity of the pacer. In oversensing, decrease the sensitivity of the pacer. In failure to capture, the pacemaker fires but does not depolarize the ventricle. The nurse should turn the patient to the left side to bring the lead in better contact with the endocardium. Check all connections and increase the energy delivered. In the example, atrial pacing and capture occur after pacer spikes 1, 3, 5, and 7. The remaining pacer spikes fail to capture, resulting in no conduction to the ventricles and no arterial waveform. In failure to pace, the electrical impulse is never initiated, so there are no pacer spikes shown on the ECG strip. The nurse should keep an external or temporary pacemaker at the bedside, assessing the patient until the cause of the failure is determined and corrected. Many pacemakers have the added function of an implanted cardioverter defibrillator, or ICD, which is for patients at risk for dysrhythmias that do not respond to antidysrhythmic therapy. The ICD continuously monitors heart activity and can automatically deliver a countershock to correct a perceived dysrhythmia. The teaching required for the patient with an ICD insertion is similar to a permanent pacemaker insertion. However, the shock from an ICD is generally painful and patients should be advised of this in advance. Others in physical contact with the patient will experience a mild sensation with the shock delivery, but no harm is done. Most doctors recommend that patients be shock-free for six months before resuming driving. Emotional support is critical for patients and family as there is often anxiety, depression, fear, and anger associated with ICD placement. As a patient approaches the end of life, healthcare providers should discuss the options with the patient and family. Patients may choose to decline a pacemaker with ICD functionality as they may interfere with the natural process of dying by continuing to function and deliver shocks. Remember, when caring for a pacemaker patient in the hospital, the ECG will continue to show pacing spikes and possible electrical activity even without a pulse. The healthcare team may choose to monitor the patient remotely so as to avoid confusion in family members at the bedside. Pacemaker technology is changing constantly, but the goal of therapy remains the same, to sustain an adequate heart rate that maintains a sufficient blood pressure that will perfuse all organs adequately. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on how to care for a patient with a pacemaker. Be sure to subscribe and check us out on Facebook.